all of you all of you guys who've gathered here to actually uh, listen to us patiently um, on what we would like to share our own insights about digital transformation and api infrastructure so thank you all hope we do justice to the topic that we've been assigned so let's get started so okay so basically what is digital transformation so it is it is the profound usage of um, technology in uh, changing the business activities, the business models, and other things without using the existing traditional methods so that you don't get stuck with the existing and the legacy methods which have been used um, since the age old uh, people in the industry. So uh, there are many digital uh, technologies that are being used in, for business transformation and um, they are like artificial intelligence and machine learning which is used to automate the manufacturing processes and we have iot which actually connects the physical world and the uh, digital world and we are all getting familiar with a lot of devices um, in iot's and uh, cyber security is another technology which is helping to uh, uh, secure your data and uh, we have cloud computing we have erp system which is used as enterprise resource planning system and we have ro robotic automation wherein all the processes that are repeatedly done are automated so that it actually reduces the efforts on the developers and the employees and we have digital twin and big data analytics so these are various technologies that are used um, for enabling business transformation so according to a study that was actually conducted in 2020, uh, it was found that 83% of the respondents found that API integration is a very critical part of their business strategy because, uh, because um, digital transformation is um, highly driven by cloud application adoption and all that. And API is a very critical aspect when it comes to cloud migration. And uh, there were many uh, aspects of the business that were improved by using APIs. And most of them were productivity got increased by nearly 60%. And there was an increase in innovation by nearly 50%. And also a more than 40% increase in the direct, I mean, increase in the revenue. So these are all the factors that tell us that makes it convincing that you know APIs have a very important role to play in um, transforming your business. So this is the uh, APIs. If you want, if you would like to see APIs in the press current digital ecosystem, um, all your um, applications that are a part of your enterprise, mostly APIs weren't exposed earlier to the external world. But because of the business demands and everything, API has to be exposed. Otherwise, it does not have you know bring that kind of excitement. So all tablets, web apps, gaming consoles, your mobile devices, your smartphones, your car, your connected cars, appliances, everything access or you know, the applications by an API. So this is the crucial um, you know, role that an API is actually playing in the current world. So we could really say that we are living in an API driven world right now. Coming to the role of API in the digital transformation, we see that you know API has become a very hot topic among the discussions of the techies. And um, we follow the API first model so that it increases the reusability, I mean, the reusability factor is increased. And also uh, APIs have become standardized so that it actually enables in connecting more partners and thus driving more business. And also um, more, you know, the current ecosystem is actually bringing in more and more focus to the API based strategies. So these are the role, I mean, this is a critical role that API is actually playing in the digital transformation. And also we can see that a lot of opportunities have been, uh, you know, we are able to capture many opportunities with the APIs. If you look into innovation, we have uh, Twitter, which has actually been transformed, not just like a, you know, a social media platform. It is actually used as, I mean, for searching on various, con I mean, content and also posting through various other, um, you know, other social media platforms. And also there's an increase in reach where, wherein you can increase your reach to a wide, uh, vast community of developers so that uh, you could leverage the, the opportunity as well. And also it supports new devices wherein you, you can connect to any IoT devices. I mean, all those things actually require an API. Uh, Twilio, for example, Twilio, you can explore new business models. And also you, you could use like uh, applications like Salesforce to increase your partner network. So thus it uh, you know leverages a lot of um, advantages of APIs. So the, all of this actually enable to your, um, your business to grow more, much faster and becomes more profitable. 
So as we saw, uh, saw the relevance of APIs, so does uh, microservices have an equal share in digital transformation. So let's just have a glimpse of how microservices also aid in digital transformation. So as we already saw, APIs enable the transformation by uh, you know uh, increasing partner help in aiding the partner ecosystem, and also uh, um, finding out new business channels and also increasing the customer creating a customer value. Uh, when it comes to microservices, what it does is um, it actually helps to communicate better to a, a large variety of you know developer communities across the globe, and also this uh, the scalability capabilities is very high. So if one of the instances is down. We could easily quickly um, uh, spin up other instances so that uh, the application never goes. I mean, there's no zero. I mean, there's zero downtime, and also it integrates various services to communicate with each other, and also the deployment becomes much faster and also easier. So this is one of the, uh, you know, um, uh, container. Uh, Kubernetes is one of a container orchestration platform which can be used for managing microservices. So this is a re-architecture, which was a major, you know, it was a revolutionary change that actually came into existence in the, um, so here earlier we had everything on a single server. If, I mean, all the code was in a single segment and uh, the, uh, you could only access the database you know, via a single access layer. So now after the re-architecturing, you could see that you know, APIs come in between uh, your UI and all the other various modules. Everything is modularized and we have various access layers to actually access database. So if at all, you know, there is some, uh, there is a, I mean, you find that one of the instances are not working properly. Uh, I know all of a sudden another instance is spinned up so that you know the same logic is happening and your business doesn't get affected in any way. So this is the advantage of microservice. You can make changes anywhere, anytime without having any dependency or you know, interdependency between the modules. So this is the um, advantage of the modularized architecture that comes with the microservice model. Okay, so as I've already told, this is how monolithic is different wherein all the code and the serve of, of the application services are found within the same piece of programming. So which makes it difficult for even a single change to go. It has to, I mean, the whole change, I mean, you have to change the whole code structure, but um, when it comes to microservices, you can make them uh, you know, change in the single um, module without affecting the other part of the program. Coming to RESTful API and microservices. So as we also microservices as other, you know, that we have individual services and functions, which are the building blocks that form the larger microservice based application. Whereas RESTful APIs are the, the uh, it acts as a glowing agent that integrates all these microservices. So they can act as a single application. So that is how they both are interlinked. Coming on to the benefits of uh, an enterprise um, um, microservice-based enterprise application, it's uh, highly scalable and there's a lot of cost saving that goes into the process and resiliency is there. Upgrades are much easier com comparing to the monolithic architecture and development becomes faster and easier. There's a lot more security and compliances that are being uh, followed and also it's language agnostic and um, agility, cloud-based architecture and smaller teams compared to the bigger teams uh, in, that work on the monolithic server. But everything good, there, there are da dark linings behind. You know, there's security concerns as well because APIs are now uh, interacting with a lot of third-party vendors. So exposing a lot of data to the external world, which is also a cause of threat. I mean, it is actually compromising your data because your data can be stolen by the API if it is compromised. And also API enables the extraction and sharing of data in a very accessible manner. So, uh, which increases the risk of a hacking, uh, uh, um, for a hacking attempt to happen. So all of this uh, exposes your data to the external world uh, because you're using an API. So, and this is a threat statistics that were uh, done, uh, you know, for the IT professionals. So, which worry about the, who worry about the external cross-site scripting, phishing, impersonization, mal malicious code injection, and all that. These are the various attacks, uh, API attacks uh, that are commonly uh, uh, seen. So, uh, you could see that um, more than fifty percent of the attacks were like. Um, like attacks like XML bomb, JSON schema, DDoS, um, and XML firewalls and message 
level security uh, accounted to 42% of the attacks and impersonation. So these, I mean, these were the range of attacks. So all of these cons, I mean, tell that, you know, uh, API attacks are really rising and it has become a major source of concern and has to be tackled and taken seriously. So to take precautions, firstly, we need to have an idea of the list of the API security risks, which uh, the Open Web Application Security Project, which is called as the OWAPS organization, has um, listed out as OWAPS top 10, which includes uh, SQL injection, broken authentication and ses session management, cross-site scripting, and insecure uh, direct object reference, security misconfiguration, sensitive data exposure, missing function level access control. Then you have cross-site re request forgery and also using components with, um, known and, um, with known vulnerabilities and also the unvalidated redirects and forwards. So these are the OWASP top 10 attacks which have been identified by OWASP as a, uh, you know, the uh, attacks that are commonly faced. And uh, those are always, uh, can be blocked by any web application firewall uh, that you work on signature based model. And um, so, I mean, um, these are the possible API attacks, which includes DDoS attack, man in the middle attack and API injection attacks. So uh, with, these are the major attack concerns that are so, I mean, facing the applications. Okay, so what has to be done to uh, uh, tackle all of these attacks is what we will actually see because uh, there are a lot of reverse engineering, uh, session replace proof. I mean, all of this have to be done so that uh, we could tackle this issue, which is of a serious concern to an organization. And that's how we come to uh, deeply look into the factor that how uh, you, know, you can explore the key for security. So I would request Vaishak to take over uh, the security concerns about the API. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, let, Vishal, uh, would you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah if you can stop sharing, I will share my screen. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, you can so, stop sharing. Yeah, before yeah, yeah. going, you want to take on question? I have one question. So the question is from Chetan. Okay. What is the digital twin? Yeah, uh, the digital twin is, is more like, you know, you have a, you know, you, you impersonate the physical object into uh, the computer model, right? Like, like, for instance, you know, a machine part, you know, you can, uh, then you can understand the flexibility, the velocity, you know, the movement of that object, and then you can manipulate it. I mean, all these, now the, the modeling, you know, I mean, 3D modeling and all those things exist, right? So it's integrating the physical object or even, you know, the, the hands uh, in medical purposes, which is, uh, you know, architectured into the computer and we do is it used in deep uh, deep fake kind of activity? yes so basic basically it's used in the manufacturing ecosystem so that uh, you have i mean enabling the processes making it more easier mm. so that's how it enables okay. i think deep fake is also maybe is a good use case what you said right so uh, it can also be used i mean the movements of a body and you know mm. it, i mean rather than the typical morphing they do this all these kinds of yeah so it's also you know a kind of thing right yeah okay so we have another question uh, yes. uh, from Vikram Raghuveer. So what is this? Where can I obtain AP audit checklist? Probably, yeah. Is, yeah. is there any input from you? Yeah. On, on yeah. Your, uh, are the yeah. API subject to VAPT test? Absolutely. So, uh, so basically, you know, uh, just want to point out one mistake in the slide we shown. I, I, I think the one which was shown was OWASP top 10 attack. It's, it's actually OWASP top 10 AP attacks. So there was a, I mean, it's included, but uh, specifically OWASP uh, community has, uh, you know, uh, the organization have put down the top 10 API attacks, uh, API specific attacks also because of the importance of, you know, the API security. So that answers directly to the questions, right? Of course, yes, the API has to be, uh, uh, come, uh, should come under the, the typical VAPT scans and all. Uh, yes, uh, of course, that's, that's one of the outline. That's a major thing uh, the VAPT companies are doing these days. So, you know, uh, the thing is that typically when we, I mean, if you look at 2010 and all those times, so you have this, as Lakshmi pointed out, you have this monolithic web applications, yeah. like like you got everything on a page, then yeah. it, it connects back to the database, right? And it gets a result. But now everything is, uh, you know, everything is completely uh, API 
you know it's like uh, you know for instance you know uh, we we were working with uh, you know uh, one of the one of the partner who is having a uber as their customer right so so they got 900 900 to 1000 apis you know running i mean they pay to log in they pay to find the best driver they pay to find the best fare they pay to find the best route uh, you know so you can think of anything you know all the process are api changed it's uh, converted right so that's pretty much important um, okay. so did they answer that question yeah yes yeah so uh you mean so there is an audit checklist as well correct uh, absolutely absolutely so that's what all of us of course have a direct list of these are mm -hmm. the checklist and uh, mm -hmm. of course the uh, vapd teams are following those okay yeah okay thanks okay. i think that's all the yeah. question yeah yeah you sure. over to you yeah yeah thank you so let me share my screen yeah Okay, do you see? Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. I think there's one more question. Is there? Uh, let me see. Is there any real time API analysis tools? Uh, yes, yes, of course, you know, um, uh, there are different products out there. Uh, so, we, uh, if you look at the web application firewall, it secures the web application firewall kind of a product, you know, uh, it secures the web app. But, you know, more specifically, there are API analysis tools also. So, it, it comes in two, two factors. One is a, one as a part of a cybersecurity service. There are a lot, lot of tools which automatically, you know, discover APIs. You know, the first process is they discover APIs and then they try to uh, inject uh, various parameters and to test that AP, whether those APIs are vulnerable or not. And based on that, they will give a suggestion. Yes, of course, there are a lot of API security analysis tools exist. I mean, by different service providers, different companies, and uh, and web app products like web application firewall gives real time, you know, API protection also. So, different, uh, you know, uh, sets of tools are there. All right. So let me start. Yeah. So basically, you know, I just want to uh, show uh, uh, typical, you know, let me was starting the point of uh, my screen is fully visible. Any, any dark? Yes, you know? we can see. Yeah. Yes, of course. Sure. Yeah. So, so basically, Lakshmi was uh, pointing out. Uh, I mean, she started with the digital transformation, the important of importance of Kubernetes and microservices, and how these microservices are used. Uh, by the um, uh, the organizations, you know, the enterprises for API, you know, because API is directly, I mean, spinning up of API instances, managing of API instances, all has to be uh, really flexible and reliable, right? So, so that is where the importance of uh, Kubernetes uh, based uh, platform, right? So, so that's one thing. And now, uh, you know, wherever we found technologies, you know, wherever the technology is advancing, the hackers are also advancing. It's, I think they are more advanced than uh, any typical fortune 1000 companies, the developers of the fortune typical thousand companies, right? So, so it's, it's, it's always a big threat. So, so I, I mean, we, we always say that, you know, a sophisticated, uh, you know, attack needs sophisticated defense also. So of course, um, before, let me come to that point, let me tell you how typically uh, on a very high level, you know, how uh, account hijacking, etc., or happened, right? So, for instance, this is one of the one of the typical way. What I'm what I'm sharing in my screen is one of the way in which um, uh, the uh, you know you log in as one user, you you get you get the home page of uh, you know you get the home page of that user, and then uh, you just change that user to another user. It's account hijacking. You can see that. See uh, this API request coming in. Uh, this is you, you you log in you know you log in as the, the user id 1002 internally right and 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 you know um, what happens uh, you just uh, change that user to 1003 the user id with 1003 so this kind of account hijacking normally happens so let me go to the next slide see i mean um, these are these are the applications we deal on a uh, daily basis the facebooks of the world the linkedins of the world i mean these guys are getting this kind of an attack, you know, once in once in a week, you know, once in a week, some kind of vulnerability is exposed, but it's not, it may not come to the public line, but it happens because uh, we cannot blame because it's one of the widely used applications. I mean, millions of users are using and of course, it's a target of, I mean, it's a playground of all the hackers, you know, all the, all the teen hackers, all the experienced hackers, the bug bounty hunters, you know, so, so all the people are just, uh, uh, trying to attack all these Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world, you know. Let me tell you the truth. I mean, whatever big company it is, I mean, it's a cat and mouse game. Nobody can win, win this battle. It's always somebody hacking into and somebody is uh, uh, blocking it. I mean, it, it's like anything, right? Uh, so, so see, I mean, this is one, one kind of uh, uh, 
a big vulnerability existed in Facebook and, and that made uh, the huge lo loss of data, right? It happened a couple of times. So, so this is one, you know, so, uh, so there, so no, normally the application providers uh, provide API access, uh, as Lishmi was pointing out, uh, you are a partner, you are a Salesforce partner or some application partner, they will give you API so that you can integrate their services in the background you know dynamically that's why the importance of uh, apis so so of course uh, facebook was given their graph api so this api got a lot of vulnerabilities you know so you uh, you request for information and 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 you know it was it was displaying a lot of excessive data exposure i mean i didn't ask for geo code you know it, it will show everything you know yeah it's it's more like you know more than 100 parameters uh, specific to a particular user so this kind of uh, api attacks are happening on a common basis then uh, another thing is um, the broken validation uh, kind of attack. Uh, this happened to T-Mobile, you know, millions of data from the T-Mobile has been stolen, right? So, uh, you know, it, it can be existing with any of the common providers we have in India. It, it's a possibility. I mean, that's a reality also, right? So, uh, you know, for instance, you know, I was I, I was trying to access uh, the, um, uh, the details of an authorized phone number. But, you know, if I change the parameter of that phone number to something else, I will get other details of other user. So you're exposed so so see i mean i just want to highlight the importance of the api security how uh, you know the maybe the audience might contain the web application the, uh, the people associated with web application de uh, development you know i mean it's, it's all web apps these days right mobile app development so of course the importance of uh, you know secure having a security co a secure coding framework is pretty much important um uh, and and you know what happens is that you know unfortunately what happens is that no, the developers are not that keen on the cyber security practices uh, i mean they just you give a module for them to code they do it and they commit it you know and you review it uh, and you know the, the typical testing thing happens you know okay inputted uh, i mean expected expected i mean given input and expected output it works perfectly right so that's it but you know the hackers are there to expose your data to the public i mean if you're doing if you're doing business with a very prestigious customer uh, you know uh, and you develop the application for them uh, and and provided if they belong to the european union uh, and all the, the the privacy laws are very strict so it has to be pretty much uh, taken into attention it's better to give um, uh, your developers you know uh, those kind of uh, you know knowledge session knowledge sharing session for uh, for typically you know on the cyber security practices they need, need to do while do the coding while uh, while doing the coding right so so this is very pretty much important uh, and and yes i just want to highlight this point i mean uh, the data which is which are getting leaked is uh, very highly sensitive you know you have, you have to be pretty much uh, care about those so this is one of the attack happened on t-mobile and see i mean this is one of the common ma again mass data exposure happened on uber so so this is what happened this is a two i mean this is a use case so so they are they are all the, the uber is all, already providing some apis for the authenticated users so what happens is that you know um i uh, i given some api request and the response was you know i just given some random api request for a user which is never existed now it on that response it will uh, it, it was displaying some extra debug information right you can see uh, this user was not existed or something like that you know so uh, so so that extra information i put it in another api call which is used by the uber and that given me uh, these all these kind of uh, results you know all the typical information so this kind of uh, pretty much sensitive or data exposure are happening uh, on a on a on a great deal you know so with respect to india i mean uh, the, uh, many of the many of the uh, main providers i mean recently you know the uh, dominos got hacked and and somebody you know posted the uh, the dominoes uh, you i mean a url where you can check your check you know let's say if i know your mobile number i put in put in the data i, I know your eating habits right so so when you give all when you are using all these mobile apps and devices the api security is pretty much important your data is uh, pretty much important and and of course the the companies need to be uh, pretty much aware about uh, this factor and they should enhance their cyber security posture on these points yeah so uh, so on a on, on a on a on a on a high level you know this these are the kind of attacks can happen which i explained already but i will just uh, go through it again uh, authentication uh, authorization the um, uh, i mean the, the the vulnerabilities with respect to authentication authorization and number two uh, you, you know it's it's more like it's it's more like you know the uh, threat protection uh, algorithms you have the rate limiting part the content filtering part 
the 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 the, the, the security of the message you are sending and receiving all these are pretty much important in this context yeah so yeah so this kind of you know single sign on all those things has to be uh, uh, pretty much updated you know the, the, the authentication mechanism you are using for your application has to be very keen if that is if that got uh, exposed first place everything is gone so the hacker does not need to access to access to do the advanced api hacking and all they can just bypass everything by having uh, breaching your basic authentication mechanisms that's one point and of course you know um, uh, the licensing the licensing of your application right so uh, so you say uh, th this api can be accessed uh, 100 times in a day something like that so uh, that is a license you have given so for instance you know you might have subscribed to uh, the contact uh, email finder or the phone number finder and all so so you have access to 30 30 credits per day so so there are vulnerabilities which will bypass this limit you know so that kind of uh, api misconfigurations are there so so that has to be taken in taken care of and of course, you know, uh, the parameter security, that's what I have shown as an example there. See, uh, you for an API application, you pass different parameters and these parameters has to be validated, right? So, um, uh, very good authentication uh, hash keys must be used to make sure that, you know, it cannot be uh, decoded, right? Of course, or it can be easily crackable. So, that has to be uh, taken care of. And, and HTTPS is a typical thing everybody knows. Uh, the, 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 the communication between uh, the, the, the client and the server should be uh, HTTPS and got it. And, and sometimes still in this world, we can see the security, the, the security of this site is not valid. All these uh, things still uh, we can see. Yeah, so, so then, uh, you know, uh, different types of threats are there, uh, which can affect the APIs, you know, um, you know, the, the denial of service attacks is one of the thing that means, you know, you send uh, access data to an API, and which uh, more than which it can accommodate, right. So, so this kind of a fussing kind of an attack. So what happens is that, you know, uh, the server, after getting, you know, 1000s of requests, the server will get down and, and naturally it, it uh, turns out to be denial of service attack. So this kind of attacks are also pretty common uh, here and you know um, so these days one of the workaround is to have api gateways you know so api gateway is more like a combination of different uh, uh, different api security mechanism and api management uh, uh, programs uh, together as an api gateway so api gateway uh, comes with you know uh, security the caching of the request you know the same request is sent over and over they can cache it and send it only uh, what is genuine uh, then of course you know uh, you can add more script to the API uh, API um, uh, calls or you can customize it more so API gateways are commonly uh, used and uh, let me uh, go to the next slide and and you know the things like rate limiting you know so if you have a rate limiting algorithm enabled you know you, you can make sure that it it serves uh, whatever it's supposed to serve so that those kind of uh, things can also be implemented right the quota management and rate limiting and of course, you know, you can see that uh, typically the API consumes uh, like, like, you know, it's an, uh, it, it, it requests an XML kind of data, not typical data we have, it's uh, the, the JSON and the XML formats are the common uh, API input uh, are used, uh, which is used to send. So, so this kind of content has, mani I mean, the, the hackers will manipulate these contents and will send, you know, invalid data and that will cause it to harm. So these kind of threats are there. And of course, you know, one of the one of the typical things uh, which comes up these days is more like, you know, the uh, the API protection mechanism, the web application API protection is called as WAP, you know, so, so this kind of devices, the, the SaaS based uh, firewalls, you know, web application firewalls, which can help to uh, secure real time, you know, uh, so it's not like you do it as somebody asked, it's not like you do a VAPT testing and do and fix it. That has to be done, of course, but along with that, we need a real time protection mechanism that's called as web application and API protection that can also be, uh, you know, I mean, it can, it can, you know, uh, secure those APIs from getting hacked in the real time. And, you know, um, so, uh, so the, if you look at the modern day, uh, the web application and API security tools, you know, the, the typical rule signature based thing won't work because of the fact that, you know, uh, if you have a rule, it will get blocked if it's not, uh, that's not the case. So, so we need more kind of a behavioral kind of thing, you know, you understand the behavior of the API 
and and you uh, you know you create rules dynamically so that that kind of uh, tools are available these days which can help you uh, more dynamically it's not a typical rule signature based theme yes yes and no kind of a thing but it's more like uh, you know dynamically understanding the api behavior and and securing you from uh, getting hacked yeah so yeah so all these are critical factors uh, you know the automation and intelligence has to be there and uh, the microservices has to be secured the next generation WAF, the runtime application self-protection products are there and and one of the other important aspect is the bots you know um, uh, these days you know everything is uh, pretty much automated uh, we we have even came across use cases where uh, you know um, uh, this particular bot uh, does this you know uh, let's say let's say you want to be a famous singer uh, in spotify so what this bot will do is you know it will uh, upload your i mean you have to upload your song on spotify and automatically you know this uh, bot which comprises of you know ten thousands of requests it will go to that particular song and increase the number of views like increasing the number of youtube views or facebook views i mean uh, this kind of bots exist a lot so what did what this particular bot does is you know uh, it, it will go and play the song and make sure that it won't play the song uh, at a particular time period it will play it will play for two minutes the next time it will play for uh, three minutes so it looks pretty much random and it won't do all of a sudden it will keep the random intervals for each and every place so uh, and and one one other thing it will do is you know it will come from a real user ip like an airtel ip address or a vodafone ip address so that uh, you know it will feel like a real human user so so this kind of sophisticated bots are there you might wondering okay one million views for a youtube video i mean possibility that you know half a million is uh, the bots so these kind of attack vectors are there so sophisticated bots uh, which abuses the apis and does all these kind of things so so this kind of uh, protection is also uh, needed in that sense so so yes uh, as, at, at profes you know uh, so we have uh, a complete coverage of the web application api security web application firewall you know uh, the api security the, i mean all all together as a, as you know we call ourselves as a web application uh, it's a website security platform we don't do email security we don't do endpoint detection threat protection but we secure all the web endpoints from getting hacked so all these or uh, you can look, look at profes.com and website and you can see uh, more uh, features about the product and all so that's uh, pretty much it about the APIs. I'm happy to answer uh, the questions. Yeah. So Vaisha, we have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, probably the one which is first uh, anonymous attendee. Does an, an application pen testing reveal all API issues with an application? Or do we need a dedicated API testing? What's okay. your take on that? Okay, does an application pen test reveal all API issues with an application? Okay, or do we need a dedicated API testing? Uh, no, not really. I think I think you know um, uh, typically uh, uh, typically on a penetration testing activity, uh, they will just do everything. You know, they they look at the web application, they look at the DDoS. Uh, I mean, uh, the database security. Uh, you know, they they look at different parts. But of course, you know, I prefer and it depends on your application. What kind of application you are using, right? So uh, if if it's an API driven application, uh, then of course a specific API security security team is needed. So when you uh, uh, when you hire companies you know you should have this kind of conversation with them right so uh, what about your api security standpoint i mean what all things you do for api uh, you know testing and do you have any use cases you don't need to reveal the customer name but you can reveal what all things so that will give us an idea how they are capable of doing it of course so that has to be done it's pretty much important right yeah another one from virish for saying what is the api rate listing and how it protect against attack i think i think he mean api rate limiting yeah. Uh, yeah api rate limiting so so basically you know uh, uh, i mean i have discussed about various api uh, even lakshmi has given a clue about the various api attack mechanisms right so that is bypassing the api and and you know changing uh, you know you uplifting as an admin user uh, things like that exist but you know uh, the api rate limiting is more to prevent abuse of your api so let's say you you provide an api to a consumer to get some data and if he if he abuses by sending more requests then we can have a rate limiting on that particular ip address you know so so that means he can only get 30 requests per second if after that you know he will get banned you know or something like that he will be blocked for next two hours so that kind of thing we can we can help uh, to avoid the abuse on the uh, api api uh, calls api servers Okay, we have again a question from Vikram. The yeah. company I work for is migrating to API to MuleSoft. How should we monitor MuleSoft after API migration? 
Okay, okay. So you are uh, the Mule, so it's a company. Uh, so they are they are migrating all APIs to MuleSoft, right? So how should we monitor MuleSoft after API migration? Of course, you know uh, I'm not much familiar about the MuleSoft part, uh, but uh, but still, you know my my take on that is that you know to make sure that you should do a API complete API testing, you know. Uh, in, in possible ways to better better to use two organizations you know uh, that means you know uh, you have two, two two directions you know two two different uh, uh, viewpoints on 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 the uh, scenarios yeah okay so we uh, other one is from Prash, uh, prashant mm -hmm. are wap and waf different where should wap be placed well uh, that's an interesting question so uh, so typically the wap uh, the old wine in the, I mean, a new bottle is it's WAP. Let me be very honest with you. So if you look at the latest Gardner card trend, you know, you can see that uh, it's they, they don't call us WAP uh, and they now call us WAP. You know, they introduced this term, it seems like. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, uh, you know, message because of the fact that now there is no more web application. I mean, it's of course web application is there and it's more kind of an API driven. So it's more like uh, the focus is more on the API security part. Uh, if you look at the API security, there are many uh, tools for API deployment called Swagger. You know the Swagger Open Open API. So these are kind of a framework where you can build uh, the APIs. One second. Yeah, where, where you can build the uh, APIs and deploy it. So uh, so the WAF now focusing more on the Swagger specification. The WAF should be able to uh, import the Swagger specification file and to behave according to that. Uh, and it, it should respect the Swagger API. So that kind of uh, facilities are available in the WAF. Uh, and and you know it got the rate limiting capability, the, uh, the the authentication capability, check on the APIs. So now that's how that's why the the, the WAF is now called as WAF. So of course WAF is a big platform and WAP is one of the modules so so that should be the correct answer for that thank you the other one is from joseph how do you see devops practices enhancing the security of an enterprise api yes uh, so this uh, you know before coming to devsecops i would like to say about devops and before that i would like to say about the system admins you know uh, previously maybe 10 years back we never knew about you know uh, devops you know we, we we say about you know system admin you know whatever right system administrator uh, now we can see uh, the term devops devops is more like you know the development and operations that means the, the marriage of the system guy with the developer right so so you, so you cannot get a job these days if you are only a programmer or or if you are just only a system server guy you know it's you should be devops right and now on to the devops uh, the additional thing came up check ops now <laughs> you don't get a job if you are a developer or if you are a system admin. you have to be a developer you are you have to be a security guy and and you have to be an operations right so so that means uh, that itself gives the answer to that uh, question right so so that so that means that you know um, uh, typically, as I said, I, as, as I mentioned somewhere just before, you know, when developers got the program, they don't think about the security. They don't have the security standpoint in them. You know, that was the conventional programmers. So they just code and they deploy the code. And when it goes to production, a lot of breaches happening. Now, when the DevOps came into being, the people, uh, the people know about. Okay, I'm deploying it to AWS. This is AWS best practices. I need to do this. So that means I have one more enhancement to their programming skill. Now, when the SecOps is in place, and this guy knows about the security practices as well, so uh, so he can, you know, uh, so he can. Okay, I understand. So I cannot, I cannot. Um, my validation of this string is uh, not like that. It has to be strongly validated. I should allow only four digits, you know, or a mix of character, no special character. So starting from that point, I should I should write the SQL query in such a way that it won't be used for an SQL injection attack, right? So 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 all this mindset, all this uh, persona change happens to the DevSecOps guys. So that will of course enhance the security practice, and that's what we need these days. And and I read somewhere, you know, we are lacking of these kind of people. I mean, a lot of opportunities and nobody is there, you know. Okay. I'll want from Girish Venkatapa, how do we control the access of tokens or the API permission abuse? Yeah, of course, uh, you know, uh, typically, you know, what, what we can see that uh, one of our customer recently, so, uh, so they have given an API for their customer, but you know, these guys were using it all the time, right? So then they asked us to implement uh, the uh, 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 you know the API authorization tokens on the API request. So see, uh, they could have done it on the developer side, but they asked us to do that. You know, on on the web side because that was a uh, 
procedures customer so so we have to do that so so this kind of authentication tokens you know um, uh, means you know you, you make sure that this token has access this api n number of times beyond that you know uh, it cannot be accessed so that kind of uh, programming practices can come with the authorization token and still you know uh, uh, still so that is one layer of blocking the attack abuse now this authorization token can be manipulated right I mean, it's always a uh, like an onion, right? It, it, if you peel into it, I mean, it's never ending, right? So this authorization token can be manipulated, right? So, so of course, I mean, you need to have multiple checks in the background of the code to make sure that you know, uh, for for instance, uh, you should check on the uh, the browser agent, the ID, the ID of the user accessing it, right? All of a sudden, an ID change and some other manipulation happening, then it has to be blocked. That's why I said uh, the time of the rules and signature based thing is out, out of the game. You should know the behavior of uh, the users if, if a system can understand the behavior of the of the uh, of the user and if he if he got a bad intent of course that will be reflected in his activity on using that api or a web application that has to be tracked down and that has to be uh, and that user has to be blocked so that is one of the way where we can uh, use, use this and thanks to all the machine learning and the big data platforms we have is easily accessible by aws or whatever you know so we can do this kind of uh, you know the bulk data manipulation which cannot be done programmatically using the hand can be use this we can, we can leverage these platforms to enhance the api security thank you another one from joseph again what are the some of the practices you should recommend for ensuring secure usage of consumed apis yeah so um uh, i mean a lot of things can be combined as i said the behavioral based uh, thing you know you should uh, you know in, in our practice in our application what we does is we understand you know we onboard the customer for the seven days I mean, we will keep it open we will understand uh, the typical behavior of the user like how he consumes the api you know what time of the day you know this is one of the point you know uh, uh, from what ip addresses he's consuming the api you know what is his uh, average request and response time so if it's a if it's kind of a normal usage you will see i mean that's where the ml algorithms are useful you will see a a typical you know uh, behavior pattern right so now so that means okay this user is legit and now what happens is that if somebody is uh, you know trying to abuse the api of course uh, you know uh, there's a gray mark you know of course the the model will say that okay this is an abuse this anomaly score is high for this user so this is one of the way in which you know we uh, we we deploy uh, you know to make sure that the, the apis are used perfectly and also you know the auditing the auditing is pretty much important i mean it's a basic thing but it's pretty much important you know you should have a proper audit of all the activities of that api right and and that data can also be used for this behavioral learning where you can understand anything malicious is happening i mean there are multiple ways to do that yeah this just came to my mind now the one from sandeep and an api gateway tool like a data power for example anyway secures the api exposed to outer world so doesn't take care of entire api security to large extent uh, uh I, I think honest answer is no no for that you know uh, sorry for this yeah so 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 typically you know uh, what happens is that you know normally one of the big uh, you know uh, we are typically in the waf market right so the application firewall and waf market right so uh, we thought that you know our competitors are akama is uh, the the 14 nets of the world the impervas of the world we thought that these are our competitors but you know we found that our competitors are amazon google assure you know the reason is that you know people by default think that we, if we are on the cloud we are secure we don't need any security at all right but they don't understand the big billion market of the impervas of the world akamai's of the world if i mean uh, similarly you know if you have an api gateway of course it, it i mean there are other api open source api gateway like kong etc are there so this can of course do a very good management of your uh, you know api orchestration you know uh, the scripting and all those things i mentioned in the previous slide so but still uh, security is something which needs specialized focus you know so so these are general purpose thing but uh, i mean uh, it, it will do i mean rather than it somebody just do a random api server and and publish it it's i mean this api gateway is far better than that you need to have an api gateway but on top of it you need to have advanced api security mechanism which gathers intelligence from multiple sources and make sure that each and every ip address hitting that api should be a genuine user or not of course you need an extra layer of security if you are serious and and you you really uh, make sure you, you really want to make sure that the data you are securing of your customers are good yeah
Just to add on to that, uh, so basically, uh, you know, uh, when you consider various cloud service providers, so it's generally, you know, told that uh, the secure, they only secure the infrastructure. So uh, the data security is the responsibility of the customer. So they have this misconception if we are on the cloud, we are secure, but uh, you need specialized, uh, um, you know, programs or applications that are actually protecting your API because API is the entry way, entry, that entry gateway of, uh, you know, all your customers, every, I mean, the business happens because if there are customers, so uh, customers access all your applications through the API. And only if you block the attack at the API, it becomes easier because once, um, you know, the hacker enters into your system, the damage done can be, you know, a very vast. So that uh, to repair the damage, it takes a lot of time and resources, which could have been avoided if you use the right tools at the right time. So that is how a web application firewall, which is based on advanced methodologies like AI, ML, and all that can help, can become handy. Yeah. Thank you. So other one from Girish, is there any challenges to configure API module into any defined application? Um, okay, so that means uh, I think Girish is asking that, you know, he already got an existing application, but he want to implement an API module. Uh, so of course, you know, um, uh, I mean, uh, the API module has to be secure at first, right? You make sure that API, uh, uh, you know, is, is with the guidelines. I mean, it's not exposing any external data and API, proper API audit has done on that module. So with respect to existing application, you know, sometimes what happens is that this existing application is integrated with this API module, right? Of course, this existing web application have direct access to that API module. So how secure your API module is, if this application has some vulnerabilities, if somebody get into that application, he will get the privilege of that particular web application and thereby this new API module will get hacked. So, so I, of course, you know, just do that as a temporary, you know, I know I can understand, you know, we came across many scenarios. So you have a big chunk of monolithic application. You cannot, all of a sudden you cannot convert it into an API based application. Then you partially, you know, you start um, uh, integrating and you know, you, 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 one, one use case you convert into API, other use case you convert into API. Finally, the entire application will be API driven, but it will take a lot of time. But uh, even you do that, it's a bit risk, uh, you know, because you are integrating uh, it into an existing web application to make sure that the, the base web application is secure enough, you know, to make sure that nobody can get into easily, then you are safe on that side. Yeah. We have one from Vishwavirishwar, want API rate limiting block legitimate request. Is there is mechanism to distinguish between legitimate user request and malicious request? Uh, yeah, interesting question. So let me give you a uh, typical use case we have uh, dealt with, uh, you know, in last month. So uh, I'm not telling the uh, competitor name because uh, it's not good. So so this competitor got a customer and, 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 and what happens is that uh, this is one of the very famous payment gateway providers in India. So, so they are getting, 50, I mean, their average request per second on a particular API is 20,000 requests per second. You can imagine, right? 20,000 requests per second is their uh, API consumption. You know, everybody is doing the payments online. You know, you can imagine even more than that. So this particular API handles 20,000 requests per second. All of a sudden, you know, their API request per second rise to 70,000 requests per second. A, a, a high, uh, a, you know, is it through bot? Uh, it's through bot. It's, I mean, we cannot identify it's a bot or not. It's coming from, as I said, legitimate land user IP address, right? And uh, and the user agents are are kind of a typical Macintosh, you know, uh, Android, you know, it's it's multi multi multiverse, you know, <laughs> kind of kind of thing is happening. So uh, so uh, so it's it's a, it's a clear evidence that DDoS attack is happening, right? So they contacted their uh, provider, the WAF provider, and what they did was their rate limited to 10,000 requests per second. So that, that makes sure that their infrastructure is up and running. The DevOps guy is happy, right? The infrastructure is up and running, there is no downtime. But the interesting fact that out of this 10,000 requests, 9,000 requests were the bad traffic and only 1,000 requests were the real users. So actually the DDoS is happening, right? And, and uh, only uh, DDoS is happening for the real users and uh, this infrastructure is up and, up and running fine. So this is a scenario we came across. Uh, so uh, so uh, here what happened is that uh, it was able to do a static rate limiting but not behavioral based rate limiting so that's where so of course uh, uh, in our context what we did was you know we profiled their existing users the legitimate users and make sure that uh, how what what are their profiles you know irrespective of the ip address you know in, in olden days you know if you look at an ip address and if it's a data center ip address of an aws or azure you can see that it's a bot somebody running the script right so we can easily block those data center ip address but these days you cannot do that we never know that our cell phone we have in hand might be a part of a bot network 
we might have installed some app and uh, and naturally we we are very registered ourselves into that bot network so they want to send some traffic like this you know our our phone is also acting like you know i think typical crypto crypto miner kind of products are there with bots you know so so uh, so uh, the scenario so we are profiling we profile what we did was as a use case we profile their application and uh, uh, and and make sure that uh, then we run uh, profiles on it and what happened that you know we were able to mitigate 80 percent of the attacks you know 80 percent of it, still 20 percent will kept coming through but that was ongoing so you know the r d team is working on that also so so this kind of yes uh, the rate limiting of course will the typical rate limiting will of course uh, yeah. block it but you need to it uh, must there's, there should be a rate limit correct mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there should be a yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just to add on to that, so maybe a rate limiting plus a behavior based detection can be more, you know, uh, tactful mm -hmm. in uh, handling bots because now, unfortunately, more than half of the internet traffic is bots and you waste a lot of resources uh, and uh, serving the wrong set of audiences because your right set of audiences might get blocked when you're using a typical signature, you know, uh, based model. So that is where you need an advanced one. Yeah, so, the, uh, so that you uh, filter out the, only the wrong traffic. So, uh, uh, Vaishak, what is the role of APIs in the dark web? How it, you know, how it is used in the the dark web scenario? Uh, so, so basically, you know, um, uh, typically, uh, I mean, uh, I think the question might be how the API abuse is used by the dark web people, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah. So, so what happens is that, uh, you know, uh, lastly, last year only, 2020, 20 only, the LinkedIn came across with a massive data breach, right? So, uh, uh, their entire, you know, uh, 100 million, you can Google for that, 100 million data of the users were available to be downloaded in the dark web, right? You, you, you give $100 or something, you know, you will get, or, I mean, they allow only Bitcoin transactions, right? So, so, so this kind of data directly goes in the dark web, even the credit card numbers, the bank account details, you know, go into the dark web and they use uh, it to sell on their marketplace. And this data is used by the marketings and, you know, all those activities. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, you know, we came across a case uh, with a with a uh, with a hospital customer in US. So what happens is that, you know, uh, naturally their uh, their patients are getting calls from the competitor's hospital. You know, uh, I mean the medical data is pretty much important. I mean it's uh, your your you know physiology, your parameters. You know, so so what happens is that you will get one patient. Okay, he got this uh, uh, you know the stent replaced on the heart, right? So you got that data. Now what happens? This data will go to the dark web and from the dark web you know it will go to the competitor and this uh, uh, people will call you um, we are calling from science so you got a you know we have got uh, more cardio cardiology options in the hospital right and and now we will wonder oh my god yes i am having this problem because my body right so uh, we have more options so specifically they will target the customer right they know everything i mean all the data is in front of them through dark time so this is one of the typical use case i mean many of these are happening uh, right and 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 we are getting targeted so api abuse directly go to the dark web from dark web it goes to the competitor hands and directly circulates back to us you know so it's a threat uh, to the uh, humanity, <laughs> I would yeah. say. Yeah. So we have just published the uh, uh, Mentimeter code. So please do rating of the session, Vaishak and Rashmi. So the other question, uh, Vaishak and Rashmi, what are the basic minimum tools required to complete API security testing? Yeah, there are, uh, you know, of course, you know, uh, there are uh, co pretty common vulnerability scanners available in the market. They are focusing more on the API, IBM app scan, of course, is one of, is one of them. So, so this kind of tools uh, may be leveraged uh, by the uh, enterprise. It's very costly, you know. So, so uh, those organizations who in the VAPT should have access to these tools, and and they can do that. And and there are you know many other tools available in the GitHub. You know, uh, if you can if you can uh, specifically focus and what uh, you know if it's a JSON schema validator or uh, or an XML validator or I mean, uh, first thing kind of a tools. If you can select those specifically, uh, you know, you can you can get the good response as well. But you know, uh, what I would say is that uh, not from that. You know, the security should start from the coding. That's what somebody asked about DevSecOps. So there are tools uh, which look at the CI/CD pipeline. You know, it 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 called a secure software development lifecycle, like SSDLC pipeline. So there are tools like check marks which will uh, scan your code 
to see that you know um, uh, are you using any conditions you know any conditions which is which can be hackable right i mean all this your api is started from a programming right you start you start writing code and that is converting as an api so there are tools at different parts of the software development life cycle which will check the authenticity of your code and and it, it not only stops in your if, if else loops nothing like that it, it will look at you know uh, how much open source components you are using inside your code and whether that open source component has been exposed to any vulnerability so there are tools like that right mm -hmm. so i mean we think that you know uh, let's say uh, an application in an enterprise application which is uh, creating a pdf as a report right so he might buy and the, the developer might have used uh, an open source pdf library if that is vulnerable to an attack gone right i mean that what whatever small entry point one hacker gets and their application is is gone right so so there are different tools i mean not only as a vulnerability scanner or an api scanner you have to look at different tools which 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 is at the uh, different levels of the ssd dlc pipeline the vera code is there you know mm -hmm. so and different i mean if it comes to the kubernetes the container scanner the vulnerability scanner on the on the container security tools are there so different levels of tools has to be used uh, in a due diligence manner so that you can if any legacy application want to open to the uh, through api so what are the suggestion you recommend yeah so um, so basically you know uh, let's say let's say you know legacy application means it, it got a code stack and it's connected to a database Right. Yeah, so, two tier, so, yeah, two tier, two tier application, right? So, uh, so basically, you know, what I suggest is that don't rewrite the application. I mean, you are going to create a mess by doing that. Rather, you know, you can use languages like Go. It's a pretty good language, not JS, right? You can just so write, you you don't touch that two tier at all. Don't touch that. Just use a database backend. You know, I know that's difficult to migrate the entire database to new thing. Rather, you just uh, you know just start you, you start from a login authentication mechanism, right? You have that database table with the user and whatever, right? You just write a Go language script as an API endpoint. You 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 follow the open API spec, you know API. Spec uh, while doing that, you know, so you 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 are in, into the protocol. So by that, you know, slowly you start converting one module, one module, and then of course a massive group of developers can do it faster, right? For that's the way I would suggest for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're on mute. Uh, so Alwan is uh, from Joseph. Cloud providers, uh, AWS, GCP now offer their own respective gateways, what would you recommend for enterprises deploying multi-cloud environment, managing policies individually inefficient, or is there any more efficient approach? Yes, you know, uh, uh, I mean, what Joseph is saying is absolutely correct, you know, so uh, with few applications and on the cloud, we can manage ourselves, we can look at the API. So when it, as I said, in the case of the Uber, etc., you know, thousands of applications are exposed, right? So, so it's not very easy to manage uh, all the entire applications. Uh, through one stack you know now the multi cloud in place the hybrid cloud in place you know so so it's very difficult to manage all these policies individually and there are uh, you know uh, different uh, providers you know uh, uh, i mean uh, the question is specifically on the api right uh, i just want to see yeah um, yeah. yeah individually is inefficient is there a more efficient yeah okay what would you recommend uh, okay cloud providers now offer their own respective gateways what would you recommend for an enterprise deploying a multi -cloud? okay he mean uh, the, the enterprise deploying an api in a multi cloud environment right yeah so uh, so of course you know uh, the the api management uh, tool uh, one one we used to have a look at is kong is a very good uh, product is an open source api so so advantage is that you can integrate different modules to it you know you can integrate WAF to it you can integrate WAP to it so so this can span across different multi cluster environment also so this is one of the tools which is coming to my mind i mean that's how i mean you cannot do it manually you, you need to have uh, the the popular api uh, tools uh, for this part yeah uh, the one even if an application from two organizations are integrated via api and one of the organization manage the connection what are the minimum assurance can or this organization give to the other organization that the api connection is secure and that's a tricky question uh, i mean uh, typically you know uh, that that's where all the compliance is all about right so uh, i mean uh, if a gdpr and all or in place i mean not in india i mean the bill is going to be released in india soon so uh, so of course i mean uh, it's not about certificates and all right uh, the compliance I mean, it has to be really secure so uh, um, I mean, uh, to make sure that the, the data is not breached, right? So, uh, so of course, uh, a third party validation of the VAPT validation of a reputed organization or something like that has to be given, right? So then only we can make sure that uh, it's, it's like that. And I hope I, he meant that, you know, yeah. Uh, 
So you are saying uh, go for a third party validation. Yeah, third party validation. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, there were some questions in the chat. Layered uh, security also a good approach. Uh, where layered security also a good. Yeah, I think I think you know there are different tools. Uh, I mean that's that's correct. You know there are different tools at different layers, right? Layer three, layer four, layer seven. You know, so uh, so that's so authentication is one layer. The uh, the web request at layer seven. You know the. Uh, so that kind of an approach can also be I mean, naturally it will come in place, you know, naturally uh, in the modern uh, cloud environments, this kind of layered security will come because there are different tools manages different layers you know, in different aspects. So all are interrelated. Yeah, so then um, uh, another one called uh, container based security available in the market. Yeah, container based security is available. All right. So, uh, uh, so basically, you know, uh, uh, I mean, this is something related to our product also. Uh, so when we, uh, I mean, um, the profits, our company started building uh, a security product, a WAF or a WAF on Kubernetes architecture in 2018. That was an early time, right? So uh, one thing we found is that there are many container security products, but there are very few container API security products. There are products which looks at the uh, policies, you know, make sure that you, you, you deploy the correct policies, things like that. But you know, the, the missing link was the API security. There are few products right, right now. Uh, so uh, the container security is a vast area. It's still like you know uh, typical security, but on container. So so there there should be specific product has to be used for specific uh, functioning, right? Yeah. Uh, this this NS Prasad has asked one question in the uh, Do we have good basic programming standards for API programming for security issues avoided proactivity and have WAP as additional control? Yeah, of course, of course uh, the security practices has to be there good security practice has to be there and and uh, you know this is one of the issue one of the questions we get you know maybe uh, the lack of awareness so we can't we i mean we introduce our product to them and they said oh, we have done the vapt testing we are secure right so so this kind of uh, approaches are there you know but you have to be really look at those you know yes of course when, when you do a vapt testing most of the bugs are uh, you know uh, figured out but what happens over a period of time the new vulnerabilities are exposed you, know, you cannot do the VAPT testing every month or every week, right? So, uh, so of course, a kind of, uh, I mean, that's what, that there comes to a different layer. So, I mean, the security has to be implemented on the perimeter level or on, on different layers to make sure that you are, so you have to look at different uh, aspects. You know, security is not limited to one factor. Of course, as Prasad asking, you know, the programming standards should be there, you know, uh, proactivity, it should be resolved and WAP as an additional control, of course, needed. That, that's how it works. So can Sonar Cube be used for API security testing? I, I don't have any deep knowledge about Sonar Cube, uh, uh, but but I, I I think it's a it's something to do with the the, the programming. I mean something which uh, uh, the check marks does in an open source community. That's what I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any other question? I have, uh, um, uh, so can we uh, poll um, uh, Vaisak or? Uh, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. I think I'm done, we are done with okay. it. Okay, Badabur Lashmi? Yes, yes. It's done, yeah? Yeah. 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 So I'm just uh, um, uh, showing the, the Mendy survey. Uh, kindly uh, participate in the survey and give your feedback uh, so that uh, we can improve in our the CP session, and then we can give feedback to Vaishag and Lakshmi as well. Sure. And uh, so one thing is like, I would like to thank um, uh, the Bangalore chapter for inviting us to share our insights. So thanks a lot. And thanks to all the audiences uh, who actively participated and, uh, you know, uh, could uh, ask us questions and get them clarified. So that hope, would, hope that it was useful. Yeah. So thanks a lot. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so can we uh, wind up uh, Vaishag? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks so a lot. big thank to Lashmi and Vaishak uh, from the Isaka Bangalore chapter for taking time for your busy schedule and giving a wonderful session on the digital transformation and API security. 
I think we, you touched upon microservices, monolithic and, and uh, microservices um, scenarios and the RESTful APIs and the account taking over other recent attack and the API gateway and the quite number of question. And uh, uh, we will be sending a, a token of appreciation in the form of digital coupon uh, from our Isaka Bangalore chapter. So thank you once again uh, for, um, for giving this wonderful session. It's a Thanks a lot. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.